it really took me aback um, after the, the fire at Notre Dame, um, the way they talked about the catastrophe in terms of tourism, um, architecture, but the fact that it was a place of worship for Christians was very rarely mentioned. Also, after Sri Lanka, two luminaries, uh, Bill Clinton and, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton referred to Easter worshipers. Well, I don't know what that is. No one worships Easter, but they were obviously avoiding using the word Christian and Christians. Why is that? Go ahead. That's a very good question because nobody has been able to answer, the, answer this uh, the last couple of weeks. It's a big mystery. Why? Um, I think you can say that secularism has seen Christianity as its enemy for a long time. And Democrats and leftists and also globalists, they only believe that ethnical minorities, women, Muslims, and homosexuals can be victims, not Christians. White men and Christians are evil people, so to say. So I think you can say in that regard, it would be political um, incorrect to say these things. But I think there is a deeper reason. I've thought a lot about this, and I also made a YouTube video on it on my own channel. And I think there's a spiritual reason for this. Um, I think um, globalists, they actually, and that's not something we talk about a lot in the political political uh, comments, uh, commentaries, but I think that they have a sort of, you know, dark side, and it means that they have a kind of hatred against Christianity, because what globalism really wants is to turn over the Christian world order uh, and implement a new belief system. And they have to get rid of Christianity for this, or to, or to carry out this plan. And I think that's why they don't do anything to, to, to stop persecutions of Christians. And mm -hmm. I think, it, I, and I actually think it's right to say that, that, that there is a kind of demonic element in it. Because it's not because it's really not rational. Because we have so many human rights movements, uh, and it's really a mystery why nobody or everybody is really silent about Christians. Well, okay. And yeah, but the, the interesting thing. Let me go to Peter in, in London. I mean, this UK report highlights that Christians are the most persecuted people in the world. Um, and on a very massive scale. And, and, and where a lot of it is happening is in uh, Muslim-dominated countries. But you don't hear human rights reports coming out, at least uh, you know, the one coming out of the UK Foreign Office seems to be a bit of an anomaly. Isn't there a double standard in play? Isn't oppression and discrimination really at the core of this, but one is mentioned and one is not? Peter in London, go ahead. Well, I have to say that all the major human rights organizations have reported about the persecution of Christians in North Africa, the Middle East, in South Asia, and many other parts of the world. And I've been championing this cause myself for many, many decades. I just want to add a caveat. Um, uh, Christians are the most persecuted religious group in the world. They're not the most persecuted group per se, but they are certainly the most persecuted fair, religious group. Fair. And, and, and I think it's very important, as you've mentioned, mm -hmm. that we do highlight this anomaly, the way in which some people in public life seem to be reluctant or slow or completely well, but, failing but Peter, to address what, the severe persecution of Christians where does in many this countries. Reluctance, David, why has the West turned yeah. its back on, on Christians, particularly in the Middle East here? You'll see at the bottom of the screen when you watch the program, um, the numbers in, in Syria and in Iraq. I mean, this is a catastrophe, absolute catastrophe for these Christian communities. And yeah. oh, by the way, Christians are protected in the area that the Assad government has control of in Syria. Outside of that, they are persecuted. And, and, and ethnic cleansing, as it were, were being carried out. And, but you don't hear much about it. It's because it's Christians that are the victims here. If it were another group, you'd probably hear a whole lot more. Go ahead, David. Yeah, I suspect you would hear a considerable amount more if it was other groups. The, the fact of the matter is, Peter, that I think in general terms, it's because there's a widespread ignorance of the scale of the issue. In the government report to which you refer, it's, it suggests that around three quarters of a billion Christians are persecuted uh, around the world. It also suggests that four out of five, or if you like, 80 percent of those people of religious views facing persecution are Christian. It also suggests that around 3,000 Christians are put to death each year.
So, so th that's the reality check in this one. This is massive, wide-scale, global persecution of Christians. Now, when you then sort of consider, well, you know, what's, what's causing this? Well, it, we do have to then ask, Peter, the very obvious question, who's doing the persecuting? And the reality are that it varies, um, but predominantly in those countries, uh, Islamist countries, uh, Christians are being persecuted essentially to the point of extinction. Also in communist regimes like China, um, North Korea, Christians and indeed all other faiths are being uh, persecuted. So we, we, we need to raise the fundamental awareness of the fact that Christians are the biggest issue. But I mean, when did you last hear anyone talk about Christianophobia? We certainly yeah. hear enough, Peter, about other forms of yep, phobias, but not Christianophobias, and yet Christians are being wiped off the face of the earth. So we need to face into the issues and the challenge. And then, you know, in the wake of the, of the, the destruction of Notre Dame, it's, it's a foundational roof. Um, uh, I, I like to think of myself as pretty well informed. I mean, media is my business. I had no idea how many churches are, are attacked and defaced in France every single year, and the numbers are astronomically high from a year ago. And it only it took that tragedy for me to become aware of the scale of the attacks on places of, of Christian worship in France, okay, part of the West here. What is happening there and what is being done about it? Because it seems like the authorities don't care. Go ahead, Ibn. Yeah, just in 2018, there were 1,000 churches that were vandalized just in France, and nobody really wrote about it. Uh, it's, it, it was completely uh, silence. And again, I would like to stress that the Western political elite and a lot of the Western culture uh, is at war with itself, at war with its own tradition. And that's why they don't stop this genocide against Christians, because they need to get rid of the Christian church, the Christian voice, to implement a new world order, to implement a new belief system, because Christianity actually gives people light to understand what is the truth, and it gives personal freedom. And this is exactly what they don't want. I mean, it is a kind of anti-Christian spirit that is at work. And normally in these political programs, we don't talk about spiritual matters, but we need to do that because you can't understand what's going on in the world today if you don't understand that underneath the political agenda is a spiritual agenda. And it's not really rational, but it's full of hatred against Christianity because nobody can explain why in these human rights times that nobody really cares about the Christians. And in France, so many churches has been uh, attacked, vandalized, you know, statues has been broken. Uh, they have taken out the host, uh, spread it all over, urinated on the Virgin Mary. Uh, and they have even, even cut off the head of a Virgin Mary statue lately. And it's also taking place now in Scotland. Uh, recently, just a few weeks ago, uh, there were two churches in Scotland that had the same treatment. It's all over the place. It's globally. And that's why I say it is the globalist who sits back and they do nothing about this because they want it. And I even think that they are making Islam do the dirty job, so to say, because it is the Western elite that is behind all this. And we have to be aware of that. It's ourselves we have turned upon. I mean, we have turned against ourselves. And I think this is a really big tragedy and a catastrophe yeah, because... It, it you know, the, 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 the thing that is, let me go back to Peter well, in London. I mean, in, 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 the, we have so much thought police right now. You have to be very, very sensitive when you're when you're dealing with people with different sexual orientations. If you have a certain, uh, if your skin color is uh, darker than mine, um, I, I have to be on guard because I have to be careful what I say. But um, the smearing and, and, and looking down at, at Christians, there's no there's no penalty for that. Zero, zero. Okay, it is taken as a norm. That you know you can you can slander uh, Christians and you'll have no downside. Go ahead, Peter. Can I just offer one correction? You said that in Syria, in the areas controlled by the government, Christians are not persecuted, but they are persecuted no, elsewhere. No, they're not. That, no, that that's is not true. true. That that's is not, not true. true. That's no. you're wrong. You're tr you're wrong, Peter. I'm sorry. You're wrong. Okay. I, I said you said you said in the areas controlled by President Assad. Christians are not persecuted. That's what that I said. That is true. But yeah. then you went on to say they are persecuted elsewhere in Syria. Yes, they that are. That is not true. Oh, that, that, is, that is absolutely, absolutely true. true. That, yeah. that, that is that, absolutely true. Can you true. let me finish, please? Yeah. Can you let me finish? They are not persecuted in the Kurdish-controlled areas, and they are not persecuted in the areas controlled by the democratic opposition. 
Uh, they are persecuted in the areas well, controlled I, by Islamist I'm not Islamist sure extremists. what your democratic opposition is, okay? Uh, I would call them well, terrorists, and most on, of the people hang on, do. Hang on, Correct. H hang on. The democratic uh, opposition controls large areas of northern Syria, uh, around ISIS, ISIS al-Qaeda. Every, every, ISIS al-Qaeda. Can, al -Qaeda. You, can you please stop headquarters. interrupting me? Can you well, please yeah, stop I, I being so to, rude and interrupting me? I have to fact me? check you. I have to fact check you, okay? I, all right, I'm allowed all right, to speak, I, and then you can fact check me. We're going to go to a short break. It's a hard then, break. Then Sorry, I apologize. Then you can fact check me without interrupting, After a short please. break, we'll continue our discussion on Christianity. Stay with RT. Welcome back to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter LaBelle. To remind you, we're discussing the state of Christianity in the world. Okay, let's go back to uh, London with Peter. Uh, we were talking about the persecution of Christians in Syria. Go ahead. Yeah, you are correct in saying that Christians are not persecuted in the areas controlled by President Assad. That is correct. But then you went on to say they are persecuted in other areas well, of Well, we'll just have to disagree. Which is not true. We'll just have to disagree on that. Which is not that. true. Which is not true. Let me explain why. Christians are not persecuted in the Kurdish-controlled areas, and they're not persecuted in the areas controlled by the democratic opposition. And every Friday, after prayers, there are mass protests in those democratic-controlled areas <laughs> where the people there protest against both President okay. Assad and against the Islamist okay. extremists. Okay, you made your point here. I'm going to go to David. I, uh, no, I, I the democratic let, let, please, opposition let yeah. doesn't exist in Syria, okay? Do I get it? They are terrorists, and hopefully they will be thrown out of Idlib as soon as possible, so Christians won't be persecuted Excuse me, anymore. excuse me. I, gave you I want to Peter, finish. What, I, what else? No, I, no, I, I want to just make another point about the point please. Twice, please. Twice, the same point twice. No, so I'd like to make point. I don't want to talk about that point. I want to make another point, a separate point. I, I'm sorry. I'll I want to make a separate, you. completely this is separate you. point, please. Go ahead, David. Go ahead, David. Other people were given a chance. I would like you, a chance you, to make you, a you, point, you, please. You're filibustering. Please stop doing it. David, jump in. Can in you Belfast. please let me finish my no, other point? I will point. cut your mic. I want to go to my yeah. other guest, David. Go ahead, David. Thanks very much, Peter. I mean, look, look, look. The, the, you know, the, the fundamental issue is here. Have, having this side discussion regarding the level of persecution of Christians um, in parts of Syria misses the it does miss the fundamental issue here. We're talking about the global persecution of Christian people, and we're not really dealing with the fact that. One of the fundamental drivers of that persecution is the rise of Islam. And that's very uncomfortable for some people to take on board. And, you know, whilst this is a factor that we clearly see in, in, in Islamic countries, the, the concerning thing, which Iban just pointed out, um, is when we look at the West and we look at what we see in France uh, and uh, Italy and other European countries, we do see what looks like very much like the beginnings of, the of persecution of Christians in, in the heart of, of Europe, a, a society which owes so much to its Christian heritage. Um, so that, that's deeply concerning. And we see it, for example, in London, when we see Christian preachers be in, in, in the street being uh, arrested by the police. So it's very peculiar to see this, uh, this persecution of this truly religion of peace. But, you know, Peter, maybe that's a reason why people find it such an easy target, because unlike certain other religions, Christians tend not to fight back. It's endemic within the faith that they have and that we have. But that perhaps then makes some people think that Christianity is such an easy touch, where, in fact, Christians deserve the same respect as every and any other faith. Ibn, the, the, the great irony of all of this here is that the more Europe becomes secular, the more it becomes Islamic. And I don't see my minorities yeah. uh, and people of different sexual orientations would fare very well if Europe were to turn into a, a Muslim continent. Go ahead, Ibn. Yeah, but I think it's very right that it is very alarming that Islam is on the rise in Europe. But the only reason why that they are able to attack Christians, even in Europe, is because our governments do not do anything about it. The reason why Europe is becoming more and more Islamic is because of the weakness of the Christians or our governments who has, you know, turned against Christianity. The reason why that, that Europe is becoming more and more Islamic is because we have this spiritual void. 
So Islam is just filling out some kind of empty room we have. And, and as long as we don't understand this and we don't acknowledge this, it will just go on and on. It's not enough just to close the borders and to have some kind of, po some kind of political uh, uh, agenda which is trying to tighten up uh, the Islamic uh, um, influence in Europe. It is a spiritual thing here, and I know it's it's very disturbing or not usual for people who are watching, you know, for political programs to deal with spirituality. But it is a spiritual problem. It is a spiritual war more than it is a political struggle, and I think Europe is losing it because we have lost the faith, and our governments is even against a Christian world order. They want to implement some kind of globalist world order, which is an anti-Christian society. We already see the breakdown of nations, uh, same-sex marriages, uh, the attack on, on, the, on, the, on the traditional family, things like that, gender. So everything yeah. that belongs, to, belongs to, 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 the, to the Christian world order is being broken down and yeah. Islam is but, going to take over. But even, I mean, but you make the most important point is that if Christians are not going to defend their own faith, then who will, Ibn? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we are so spoiled. We're but used to that. Our, I mean, we are used to that. Our governments will take care of it. And we are very naive because we believe in democracy and, you know, freedom of speech and all these things. But there are many Christians right now who cannot talk about their faith because they're going to be punished for it because the thought police is already there. You cannot, you know, say anything against same-sex marriages. You cannot say anything against transgenderism. All the old Christian values are political incorrect. So it means that you are, it's already, you know, taking place here in Europe, uh, Christian persecution, but on, in, a, in a more subtle way. And Christians really have to wake up and see that they have to fight for the faith. Well, and I guess I, I, if... I, I, I think you're, you're right. I mean, and it has to start there. Peter, just to switch gears a little bit here, is you think one of the reasons why Western governments uh, don't uh, speak out more about the uh, persecution of Christians in the Middle East is because the, 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 the United States and its allies have been conducting so many illegal wars in the Middle East. It's kind of embarrassing that they're the illegal invasion, uh, for example, of Iraq has is, is, is really damaged the, the vitality of the Christian community there. And then the illegal um, uh, occupation of American troops in Syria. I mean, if you start you know, uh, uh, admitting that, yeah, our, our politics in the region is hurting these communities, it might be a reason for them not to do it anymore. Go ahead, Peter. Well, I think you're true that um, in some people's eyes, Christians are identified with the West. So when the West does bad things, whether it be in uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, or wherever, um, people do tend to blame Christians, and it's very unfair to blame individual Christians for the actions of Western governments. That, that is a, a gross um, uh, generalization and, and making a connection which is not there. But I would say that, going back to the main thrust of this debate, that um, it is true that in Muslim-majority countries, the persecution of Christians is most severe. Mm -hmm. But not all Muslim people share that persecution. I so agree. I, I agree. work quite a lot. I agree. I can, agree. Can I? Can I sure. Go okay. ahead. Uh, I work quite a lot supporting Christians persecuted in Pakistan. And time and time again, I've come up with uh, or met or dealt with um, Muslim people in Pakistan who have defended uh, their Christian neighbors and, and shopkeepers and their churches. Well, so I, we mustn't make generalizations. That's a very good point. And David, you've been so patient. Go ahead. Pa yeah, patience is a virtue. Um, <laughs> one of the things, Peter just, Peter just referenced Pakistan. And I mean, I think that's an interesting scenario because in Pakistan, we do see um, fierce persecution of Christians. And that resulted in um, one Christian lady, um, Isaiah Bibi, yeah. basically having, a, you know, uh, being sentenced to, to execution. Um, and she applied to get sanctuary here in the UK. And the UK government, to its eternal shame, said no. And why did they say no, Peter? That's a good question. And the reason that the UK government said no to providing uh, asylum to this lady facing execution uh, for her faith was because it might upset communities in the UK. Upset. I think it's very reasonable to ask. Upset. Upset, yeah. Which might be 
upset. And no, that's, that's, that's just cowardly. Manifest that's cowardice. I, I don't that's know. cowardice. Let, let me finish. Go ahead. Y it's, you're absolutely right, Peter. It is cowardice because the government uses the word upset. It's a euphemism. Um, if the government has further information, it should have provided it. But at the end of the day, the British government was, was quite prepared to let a lady, a Christian lady in Pakistan, facing execution, die rather than give her sanctuary. What does that say about the state of Christianity here in the UK, never mind anywhere else? A weak, conniving, spineless government. That's what we have. Ibn, what do Christians need to do? I mean, I agree with much of what you have to say here, but it seems the weakest link are Christians themselves. Yes, that's right. It's not the strength of Islam, but it is the weakness of the Christians that is the problem. So Christians, at least in the Western part of the world, really need to be able to be warriors to fight and also be ready to die for the faith. I mean, that's how uh, the Christian uh, faith spread in the Roman Empire. It was because Christians were, would stand up for their beliefs and they would be ready to die. We're very spoiled. We're not ready to die for anything. We, we just want the welfare state to take care of it and, you know, everything is just all right. But we need to learn that time is changing. And we cannot uh, depend on, on, on our governments to, pr to, to protect our churches and our faith. So I think we have to go back to the catacombs, so to say, and fight. And I'm, I'm curious to see whether this is going to happen in the Western world, but because we see it everywhere in the Middle East, where it's very dangerous to be uh, a Christian. You see Christians standing up for the faith. And actually, in the Middle East, the Christian faith is growing, and a lot of Muslims are converting to Christianity. Okay, because, Ibn, let me, let me jump in here. Let me give Peter the last.